Cyberpunk 2077 is finally here, and there is quite a bit to unpack with this experience. Night City is a vast and immersive open world with just so much activity, stories, quests, and customization options. You'll be helping the NCPD by taking care of illegal activity, scanning wanted criminals and eliminating them, doing jobs for fixers, discovering loot stashes, hacking into terminals, completing quests for pivotal story characters, buying unique makes and models of vehicles, taking part in challenging, mini games, and making decisions that will decide who V becomes in Night City, the dystopian dark future. You can be the a-hole self-serving merc that nobody likes, the merc with a mouth, or you can be the nice, helpful V who everyone relies on. Whether you're watching this now or in, say, six months, there's a lot about Cyberpunk 2077 that may appear as overwhelming or features that confuse you, so I want to break down some of the key aspects. Of course, this will be spoiler-free, no spoilers, as I think everyone deserves and should experience this game for themselves. But also, if you're still not sure if this is the game for you, make sure to check out my spoiler-free review of the game. Link in the description, there should be something on the screen. Nonetheless, this is actually the most important tip that I can give to start off with. Do not skip side jobs, especially story arcs of characters that you meet as that will ultimately impact how all of this comes together. And also, I mean, some of the side jobs are arguably more interesting, emotional, and intriguing than the main quest line. You can run through Cyberpunk 2077 in 20 hours or so, but doing so, you miss out on a lot of the key story content and choices that you could have had. In my opinion, this is a game that you really should not rush through. So please, do the side jobs, as actually I think that label really understates the importance of some of that content that branches into the main narrative. Now, at the beginning of Cyberpunk 2077, you will have to make a choice, a big one, that will be, well, your life path. You either can be a corpo, nomad, or street kid. After about 60 hours of playing at the time of recording this video, I can say with certainty that you're background decides a lot. Of course, the opening of the game is different, but how characters view you and the dialogue options that you have available will also differ. Being an outsider of Night City as a nomad has its advantages, especially when dealing with the Aldicados clan in the Badlands. Being a street kid, you understand the streets a whole lot better. Having established relationships already with some of Night City's gangs like the Valentinos. Being a corpo, you've lived a life among those in control of everything, and you have key insight into their thinking. In the early hours of Cyberpunk, 2077, you are locked into Watson. This is more of the tutorial part of the game. Trying to leave will unfortunately have you being sent back, so don't bother trying to explore Night City until you've completed the prologue section of the game. While it is pretty cool all the customization options that you have in the character creator, like being able to change your teeth, beard, makeup, ears, eyes, hairstyle, skin tone, and lower body parts, in the grand scheme of things, your appearance does not really factor much into the game. You will see V on a motorbike in third person person during some special moments when you utilize the game's photo mode and through an occasional mirror, but that's about it, as the game is played from the first person perspective for a more personal connection that CDPR wants you to have with Night City and the characters that inhabit the many districts within it. Your appearance does not ever come up in conversation, so looking tacky or sharp with whatever gear you obtain does not usually matter. I mean, a few characters will comment about your look, but it just seems to be the same dialogue no matter how you look, but what will matter is if you have a female or male character, as some NPCs do react and speak differently to V, but also romances in Cyberpunk 2077 do change. Some characters are only into female V, while others are only into male V, as far as I understand. Having enough eddies will open new routes, but also sometimes it's just required, so do try to save up. This isn't necessarily to do with the main storyline, but there's quite a few moments within side-related content that having a pocket full of cash is necessary, or at the very least a dialogue option. One example that I will give, since we've seen this quest like a hundred times in marketing since 2018, is when you deal with the Maelstrom gang, and their gang leader Royce has his handgun pointed at you. If you've explored the Watson district earning 10,000 eddies in those first couple of hours, you unlock a different route, which will change how the quest is done. Also, when you take on the fist-fighting minigame, most encounters will require a certain amount of eddies to use to bet on yourself. Now, with quests, as I just mentioned, you can unlock different routes through having enough eddies, but there's also more hidden options available. These largely depend on if you explore and investigate a compound or area. Typically, characters will give small nods to potential hidden options. Like, one good example is that I assumed one character had died in a mission, but loading an autosave, exploring the level further, I discovered that I, well, could actually save their life. 
your attributes and how high up a specific stat is leveled up to will decide if you can utilize a specific dialogue option or unlock a different path through a level. So for example, having enough points in your tech ability will impact if you can open doors easily. When dealing with some characters, they will sometimes just not listen or care about what you may have said, and if you have enough points invested into the body stat, you can pretty much just intimidate them to get your way. Another example is when you deal with netrunners, and when they start speaking very detailed about the tech they use, if you have enough points invested in, say, the intelligence stat, you can add some of your own knowledge to the fold. But as this is an RPG, you cannot max out each stat. So investing into reflexes, body, and intelligence, primarily like I did in my first playthrough, comes with having to sacrifice my cool and tech stats. This matters especially when trying to do stealth, which can be an optional objective in some fixer-related quests, which are called gigs. Sometimes fixers like Wakako Okado will call you up and present you with a gig, and she'll mention that her client request that you act discreetly or not raise an alarm. If you complete that side objective, you'll gain a bonus reward on top of the eddies given for the gig. If you don't, however, you'll still get the eddies but no bonus reward and the dialogue from the fixer will typically sound a bit angry that you went in guns blazing when they asked you to not. One good example that I can give is that I was in luxury apartments in the Westbrook district. Reaching a target's location, I was only given one option for stealth, which depended on my tech ability points, which I obviously just didn't have enough of. So I had to break a window to access another door, which unfortunately raised an alarm, which sent drones after me. Because I did that, I missed out on the bonus reward. Fixers play a central role in Cyberpunk 2077 side content. Whenever you access new locations, they will call you up and present jobs that you can take on for them. But also, fixers will send offers for vehicles. See, in Cyberpunk 2077, if you want a permanent cool ride that you can call to your location whenever you need it to be there, you will have to buy vehicles. Sometimes you can earn a few custom rides and quests, but most of the time, you'll have to pay up. And I can say with certainty, the more you play the game, progressing through side and main content, the better vehicles will be offered. So spending eddies quickly on a vehicle might not be the smartest choice, especially since they can be quite costly, with some of the more expensive rides costing upwards of 150,000 eddies. But a big part of the game is building your reputation. You might notice the green street cred level at the top of your inventory screen, and this is extremely important because it decides how Night City views V. Building this reputation up unlocks new vendors, items, and other pieces of content. Fixers and other characters will even mention your growing legend, and how they've heard that you get shit done. Especially in regards to weapons, cyberware, and armor, your reputation level will decide if you're even allowed to buy a a certain gear item. Many vendors will lock gear depending on your level and street cred level. How you build up street cred is by taking part in Night City, doing gigs, completing NCPD scanner hustles, clearing out gang outposts, taking on side stories, and etc. But early on in Cyberpunk 2077, you may wonder what's the best way to get high level gear, and there are a few answers to that question. One is Cyber Psychos. These are essentially boss fights given from fixer Regina Jones. As you explore Night City and get close to one of these encounters, she'll call you up and ask you to take them on for her. Typically, these encounters will guarantee some of the best loot the game has to offer, like legendary weapons and outfits. Although it's worth noting, these fights can be challenging. Each of these bosses, which are scattered about, have special abilities and can literally take you out with just a shot or two, depending on how your character is built and the level you are at the time. Following a gunfight that you have in, say, Haywood or Westbrook, you might come upon legendary or epic items. Then you'll sometimes be disappointed pointed to find out that the higher tier loot is just a lame base model, but before you decide to sell the item for eddies, I would actually recommend at least considering to dismantle the weapon instead, because crafting and upgrading can be of importance, especially when you find iconic or unique pieces of gear. Throughout Cyberpunk 2077, you'll find just so much junk and crafting components, but all of this can be very important and worth it with upgrading your gear. As the rarity goes up from common to uncommon to rare to epic to legendary, the more difficult it can be to find and upgrade these items. Besides looting items from locations and hoping you find legendary or epic crafting components lying around, it appears at least from my time in the game, taking on the different types of robots and drones will guarantee more often than not better chances at obtaining these higher tier components needed for both crafting and upgrading. Then there's also access points, probably the biggest and most pivotal way of obtaining eddies, quick hack crafting components, and sometimes actual quick hacks that you can add to the mod section of your cyber deck. To utilize access points, 
you need to find these small, sometimes hidden interfaces. Usually on the minimap, you'll see them as a red icon, and most of the time these interfaces are on computers or side panels, which will ask you if you want to jack in. And again, you can only do so if you have the necessary intelligence points. Now, sometimes you might run past an access point. To find them as soon as possible, definitely recommend obtaining the ping quick hack, which is the one that you get in the first few hours of the game. Then, if you've invested enough points in the intelligence attribute, definitely recommend obtaining under the breach protocol skill the extended network interface perk, which automatically highlights nearby access points. So how this exactly works is that access points load up the breach protocol minigame. This is only possible if you have a cyber deck in your operating system of your cyberware menu. Doing so, this minigame has typically three sequences of code that need to be entered, sometimes less. Your objective is to crack the system, and each of these sequences act as you sending daemons or hacks to gain access. You only have a certain amount of time, so quick thinking is necessary, but before you start the minigame or enter a code in, you have time to examine the sequences and try to come up with how to solve some of it. Sometimes you can get all three entered, sometimes just one. Usually I aim to always get the one that guarantees the largest reward. So when you finish one of these breaches on an access point, you'll gain a few rewards. The main one is a large sum of eddies, and this adds up because there are tons of access points. Breach Protocol, this minigame is not just for accessing these lucrative rewards, it can also be used in combat. Breaching an enemy who has cyberware or a camera system will reduce the RAM needed to use other quick hacks on enemies in the area since they all use the same network. So usually it would cost, say, 8 RAM to use a cyberware malfunction quick hack, but because I successfully breached the network, it will only cost 6 or so, and all other quick hacks RAM cost is reduced as well. Now I should mention that RAM does over time very quickly just, you know, regenerate, but when you're surrounded by tons of Tiger Claws or Valentinos, these quick hacks and how much it costs can be very important. Now, this method of attack is valuable for those wanting to really just be a net runner in Night City. So overall, hacking in Cyberpunk 2077 is quite big, which is why upgrading your cyber deck by visiting Ripper Docs and obtaining better ones, in my opinion, is extremely important. But also in your Cyberware tab, you can add mods to your cyber deck, which are custom quick hacks that you'll find and purchase in your travels throughout Night City. Now, as big as hacking is for you, it's also big for your enemies who can utilize cameras or just looking at you to deliver devastating quick hacks. The best way to deal with Netrunners, and this is especially key in those first few hours, is by acquiring the I Spy perk under the quick hacking skill in the intelligence attribute. What this does is reveals enemy Netrunner locations, highlighting them in orange when they attempt to hack you. If you don't have this perk, you could be searching for a bit or a while, which might lead to you having little health left or dying. So no matter what Netrunner or not, that perk is pivotal, and there are a few others that are just needed in those first few hours. Under the body attribute in the athletic athletic skill, you need the regeneration perk, which slowly regenerates health during combat. The pack mule, right beside it, is also key as it ups your carrying capacity by 60. Under the cool attribute and the stealth skill, you have crouching tiger, which increases movement speed while sneaking by 20%. Those are just a few early perks that I highly recommend that you get. But as you play through Cyberpunk 2077, utilizing handguns or doing the breach protocol whenever you can, you'll be further rewarded for doing so. In the lower left hand corner of every skill, there is a progression system which has 20 levels and features a variety of rewards. Unlocking a level, the rewards are sometimes specific to say just handguns, with you gaining a damage bonus but you also will get things like a boost to your overall stamina and new perk points which can be used however you want. So the more you use a weapon or hack or playstyle, the more rewards that you'll gain. Now to a quick rundown on just a couple of other additional tips that I have, always check your minimap before leaving a location. Sometimes a killed enemy may have dropped legendary items items or gear, and you might have missed it. On the minimap, at least for enemies that are dead, they'll have an X mark in either gray, green, blue, purple, and orange, which represents the highest rarity of item that they possess. If you need to steal a ride, you usually can throw someone out depending on your body attribute points, but the more easy answer is literally just getting in front of said car, shooting a single bullet into the vehicle, and they'll jump out and run away, allowing you to take control of the ride for the time being. So no, you don't have to wait to drive in some of the luxury vehicles vehicles Night City has to offer, although you can't own it through stealing it, it's just a temporary ride. If you're looking to create some chaos in Night City, at least on normal difficulty, it's borderline impossible. Driving through a crowd of, say, four NPCs or shooting four of them will spawn in dozens of NCPD officers, with Max Tech, their special unit, spawning in and taking you down within seconds. So Grand Theft Auto-like Rampage is not exactly very easy as police.
police are quite OP in Cyberpunk. There are three gun types in Cyberpunk 2077, each having a specific benefit. Power weapons can ricochet bullets, tech weapons can charge up delivering a deadly shot, and smart weapons lock onto enemies as long as you have the necessary and correct cyberware connected or installed. Many weapons in Cyberpunk 2077 can also damage enemies with a shot through a wall. When looking for new missions to take on, always remember to read messages, as some can't and won't be triggered until you read or respond to a text someone sent you. Vehicle types matter. Early on, you'll only see cheap and mostly crappy cars within, say, the Watson District, for the most part, but as you enter sub-districts like North Oak, you'll be introduced or see more luxury, rich, and high-end brands of cars that are also more difficult to steal, requiring higher amounts of points and specific stats. Vehicle variety also matters in the Badlands of Night City, as Nomad, heavily armored vehicles perform better off-road. Scanning enemies comes with a few great benefits, like slowing down time and allowing you to see enemy information like what a Valentino gang member may be weakened by, and resistant to. This is especially important if you meet Red Skull enemies, which indicates they're much higher level than you, and will easily kill you if you're not careful or strategic in combat with them. Gaining cyberware is quite costly, and can only be done by Ripper Docs at the respective location. Many cyberware can give you huge gameplay benefits, like Mantis Blades can slice enemies into pieces, while Gorilla Hands allow you to easily beat enemies to death. Other cyberware can improve basically your entire gameplay experience, from giving you more damage, improving your attack speed, slowing time when an enemy sees you, and more. Kuroshi Optics, which gives you the ability to scan enemies, also comes early on in the game and has huge upgrades which can be valuable, like a threat detector mod which highlights enemies who have detected you. Each attribute in Cyberpunk 2077 can be maxed out at 20, and doing so unlocks top tier perks and the respective skill trees. But again, you can't do this for every attribute as the level cap is 50, in which you'll stop gaining attribute points, which are only earned by leveling up as far as I understand. Last but not least, Johnny Silverhand. He is a digital ghost that only V can see. Building that relationship up is huge, although it can evolve in different ways depending on how you talk with him. Johnny will give advice, but understand he has his own motivations, so his advice might not always be the best for V. Sometimes you will come upon encrypted shards, and if you find one, you need to crack the security. Doing so at least in the few occasions that I found one, as they seem to be pretty rare, will open up the Breach Protocol minigame. Successfully doing this will give you a sizable reward. Cyberpunk 2077 is a massive experience with just so much to do. Even right now I'm still learning more about the game, although these are just some of the tips that I feel beginning and starter players should definitely know, as while Cyberpunk 2077 does offer a short tutorial, there are many parts of the game not really detailed. Some are obvious, like adding mods to weapons or clothes gives a gameplay boost, but with how important Breach Protocol is, and how enemy netrunners can hack you, those are features that I hope this video helped make you understand better. Anyway, what playstyle or build are you planning for your first travels into Night City? Let me know down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos, links are always down the description below. I'm most active on Twitter, giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games, and again, thank you for joining, consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.